welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Bhumika. Let's look at today's top medical news. Clinical trial shows 40% reduction in risk of death from cervical cancer. Doctors are hailing a new treatment regime for cervical cancer that could possibly reduce the risk of dying by 40% in the biggest advance against the disease in 25 years. In research led by University College London, it has been reported that the results of the phase 3 clinical trial showed a 40% reduction in the risk of death from the disease and a 35% reduction in the risk of cancer coming back within at least 5 years. Their findings have been published in The Lancet. The new treatment plan was tested in patients recruited over 10 years from the UK, Mexico, India, Italy and Brazil. Dr. Mary McCormack, the lead investigator of the trial at UCL said, this is the biggest gain in survival since the adoption of chemo radiation in 1999. Every improvement in survival for a cancer patient is important, especially when the treatment is well tolerated and given for a relatively short time, allowing women to get back to their normal lives relatively quickly. Cutting the probability of premature death by 50% by 2050, goal set by Lancet report. Ahead of the 2024 World Health Summit, in which the World Health Organization is a partner, a new report by the Lancet Commission on Investigating in Health has set a goal of cutting the probability of premature deaths around the world in half by 2050. Seven of the 30 most populous countries, including Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Iran and Turkey, are on track to meeting the ambitious yet feasible goal, which the report's authors have called 50 by 50. The international team includes authors from institutions such as Harvard University School of Public Health, the WHO and Public Health Foundation of India, New Delhi. They explain that on average, a 2019-born person had a 31% chance of dying before turning 70 years of age. If the 50 by 50 goal was achieved globally, a 2050-born individual can expect to have only a 15% chance of dying before turning 70, they said. The authors said that the gains made by the seven countries in slashing chances of early death can be achieved early on the route to providing full universal health coverage. To achieve the 50 by 50 goal, tobacco control, including taxation, is the most important policy that governments can adopt given the tobacco-related deaths and the established capacity of governments to implement tobacco policy, the team said. With regards to the exceptionally high death risk from pandemics, the authors attributed the success of the best performing nations such as China and Japan to national implementation of public health fundamentals, early action, isolation and quarantine, along with financial support for the exposed. Converting harmful fatty acids into beneficial ones to fight childhood obesity. Using gene therapy, Shriners Children's St. Louis Director of Research Dr. Farshid Guilak and senior scientist Dr. Ruhang Tang have discovered a revolutionary new way to convert harmful fatty acids into beneficial ones, making it possible for children battling obesity to lower the risk of other health problems particularly arthritis. The findings were published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. According to the Center for Disease Control, nearly 20% of children and teens are considered obese. Research shows it can have a dramatic impact on a variety of health conditions including arthritis, heart conditions and other metabolic problems and the American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends early and intensive treatment to combat obesity. We've learned that the number one preventable risk factor for arthritis in children is being overweight, said Dr. Goilak. Our typical response is simply telling kids to lose weight without addressing the larger issue. Childhood obesity has become an epidemic and as a result, arthritis is becoming increasingly common in children. One of our key findings is that it's not just the obesity itself that's harmful, but also the diet. The types of fatty acids children consume play a significant role in a child's weight gain. And once children are obese, it opens the door for other significant health problems that can be hard to reverse. Prefer sugary treats? You may be 31% more likely to experience depression. People with a preference for sweets are at a higher risk of developing depression, diabetes and suffering a stroke, according to a new research from the University of Surrey. The study published in the Journal of Translational Medicine took anonymized information on the food preferences of 1,80,000 volunteers within the UK Biobank and used artificial intelligence to group them into three general profiles. Number 1. Health Conscious who prefer fruit and vegetables over animal-based and sweet foods. Number 2. Omnivores, who like most foods including meats, fish and some vegetables, as well as sweets and desserts. Number 3. Sweet Tooth, who prefer sweet foods and sugary drinks and is less interested in healthier options like fruits and vegetables. Thank you for watching Medical Dialogues. Stay tuned for more such updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe, 
and press the bell icon.